questions. In the chair is Sean Lay. Hello and welcome to the Curzon Community Cinema in Clevedon in Somerset, which has stood almost as long as the town's landmark pier. This building opened as the Picture House in 1912, four years after Britain hosted its first Olympic Games. We're about 15 miles from Bristol and... This was not the first time that Clevedon had been host to the programme. In the 1950s, the now demolished Salt House Pavilion was the broadcaster's venue. The Any Questions programme had originated in the BBC's West Region in 1948. It has broadcasted regularly ever since, making it the longest running political panel show on the radio. Questions are collected from the audience as they arrive and a number are then selected by the BBC producer. Uh, we um, choose 10 questions, but we never get through 10 questions, but it's good to have choices as the programme goes along. Um, if I call your name, could you put your hand up and show us that you're here, and then come down to the front and Polly will show you where to sit. Janet Briggs. Uh, Hilary Neal. Sarah Brown and Catherine Poole, <coughs> uh, Peter Templeton, <coughs> and finally David Frame. Um, people are always intrigued about how we choose the questions and um, what I can say is it's, it's neither scientific uh, nor sinister. We just <laughs> genuinely take all the questions in and try and get a sense of where the interest is. And then in terms of if we've got ten questions about Syria, which is the most pithy really and which is going to get to the heart of things quickest. And... Okay, and now we're ready for this evening's panel. this evening and um, I think though it's probably quite useful uh, for all of us uh, as much for us as for you if we have a little warm-up I think actually if we could start with um, David Frame's question please David Frame are the members of the panel more or less enthusiastic about the Olympic Games than they were a week ago well sorry everybody's got an opinion on that Digby Jones definitely yes um, I, I was always one that I was in Beijing on the night when um, we hand, they handed it over on the closing ceremony, and uh, I have to say, I, 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 over the next few years, I've been thinking, are we going to deliver it on time? Is it going to be right? And are we going to find one newspaper headline that, in any way, shape, or form, has an act of positiveness? In that? Um, and um, but I've always been an optimist on it, and I've always been a huge fan of it. Um, I was short of bits on Friday, and I'm even more through to bits today. Well, I have to say, I was a grumpy old woman where there's that little James. What do you mean, was? Well? <laughs> I have had a conversion, and I was grumpy right up to, I, which I was very fortunate, I was actually able to go on Tuesday. And right up to that moment, I was cross uh, with everything about it. And um, then I walked into, into the archery, which again, I thought was going to be rather... And, you know, enormous amount of pop music, um, an American uh, style comp game such a host uh, talking to us and it was thrilling. It was really, really exciting and I thought if they could make Archer exciting, this has to be worthwhile. <laughs> Angela Billingham. Well, one of the advantages of being old is that you can have been there for a long time. And I was one of the originals that was urging the government to actually make the bid, to be part of the bid, because, you know, there was an enormous amount of scepticism. Should we go for it? Could we afford it? Uh, was it the right thing to do? 
Well, I kept saying, for goodness sake, let's go for it. Let's show that we can do something on this scale and prove to the world how confident we are. And then, of course, when we heard those words, and the, the 2012 Olympics will be held in the city of London. Do you remember how we all jumped up and were delighted? And I've been delighted at you. Simon Jenkins, you tempted to uh, break with the consensus on this one? <laughs> More than my life's work. <laughs> Is this the only question we're getting on the Olympics? <laughs> I, I can't tell you about the question. I mean, do we blow it all now? <laughs> no, and the other question was more or less than at the beginning. I, I mean, it, it would be strange if you weren't more, because um, at the beginning, I wasn't very enthusiastic. Um, but I knew I'd be more enthusiastic after a week than I am. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, look, I tell you, it's be interesting for us to get a feel of, of what all of you think. So let me put this in, um, in two parts. First of all, um, who was always in favour of the Olympics from the start, coming to London and, and the investment in it? Yeah. Yeah. Anyone prepared to say they were against back then? Yeah. Okay, uh, and okay, now, week in, uh, who's in favour? That's pretty overwhelming. And against? Oh, still some time now. It's interesting. So, it's interesting to see what it'll be like next week when Eddie Mayer does the programme. Uh, from uh, Manchester, or from Salford rather, to see uh... Thank you all very much. Thank you to our audience here at the Curzon Community Cinema in Cleveland. That's any questions. The ancient festival of Lammas was held in the Millennium Orchard of Brookfield Walk to celebrate the first harvest of the year. It was organised by Transition Clevedon, whose declared aim is to build a confident, thriving and self-reliant economy to meet the challenges of climate change. We are celebrating Lammas today, which is traditionally the 1st of August. And we decided to have this because everything else we've planned this year has been rained off. <laughs> <laughs> so we thought by having the summer, summer festival, we were bound to have lots of sunshine. So thank you very, very much for coming. It's an old church festival, but it's got ancient origins and it goes back to Celtic times. But it was an important Celtic quarter year festival. And it was named after their god, I don't know how you pronounce this, but Lug, which is L-U-G-H. But Lammas comes from the word loaf mess because traditionally the first loaf made from the first corn of the harvest was eaten at, at Lammas. Lots of different people are doing things. I'm going to hand over now to Peter. So Lammas, the first loaf, is all about um, the seed and the, the cycle of the, the earth, that the seed from uh, last year's harvest we've saved up and uh, it doesn't look very lively down there at the moment but by the time it's got a bit of water on it and it's planted in the earth then it'll grow up and provide the the new lows for the next season together may the, the miracle of life within, within these seeds burst forth yielding, yielding a bountiful harvest bless, bless all seeds and those who plant them so we've been given this soil, the soil serves as the medium for the seed to grow. It cleans water, regulates climate, it provides warmth, nourishment and support so that new life may emerge. For the occasion, and according to tradition, corn dollies had been hung in the branches of the apple trees and the children in the group were sent out into the orchard to find the golden apples hidden there. Another tradition at Lammas time. The celebrations ended with the singing of the traditional drinking folk song about Sir John Barleycorn. There were three men come from the west that fought his soul to try And these three made a solemn vow John Barleycorn must die 
He planned this so they had him in three clothes upon his head. Till these three men were satisfied, John Barleycorn was dead. They kept him by for a very long time, to rain on hand did fall. When Mr. John raised up his head, and so amazed them all. They hired a man with a factory six and split him skin from blood. The million served him worse than that, for he ground him between two stones. They worked their will on Tony Corn, and he lives to tell the tale. We pour him into an old brown jack, and we call him Pembroke This year's Clevedon Art Club Open Exhibition was staged in the Science Atrium of the Clevedon Community School. Over 600 entries were submitted, but there was only space for 300 items to be displayed. The winners of the 2012 awards were Winter Morning by Richard Neville, who received the Jean Kent Prize for Artistic Merit. The President's Award was given to Sheep 2 by Dawn Cox. The three selectors' choices were Abandoned House Skyros by Les Bath, Tree and Rocks, Cheddar Gorge by Geoffrey Stanton and Waiting for the Wave by Maureen Pittman. The winners of the Clevedon Art Club Prizes for Artistic Merit awarded to students of the Clevedon School were Alec Crisp, Kyle Nichols and Chloe Neal. The official names for the sandbanks between us and Wales is the Middle Ground. A total of 30 sailing club members went on the trip, including 10 children. They sailed in nine dinghies and were escorted by two rescue boats. It was a sunny day 
but a light breeze caused problems and the rescue boats ended up tugging them to their destination. The tides gave them about two hours on the banks. Time for a barbecue and to set up some games including the badminton-like game Tamborelli. Eventually the incoming tide made them take to the boats and attempt to return to Clevedon. In zero wind this was achieved by everybody getting daisy chained together in two rows behind the rescue crafts. Everybody really enjoyed the experience and the general verdict was, let's do it again. Spotted early one evening from the windows here at OCR Studios in Clevedon were some balloons from the Bristol International Balloon Fiesta. Normally, with the prevailing westerly winds, the balloons, flying from the showground at Ashton Court, travel out past the suspension bridge and then over Bristol. But this year, with an easterly wind blowing in our directions, the citizens of North Somerset got a grandstand view. The appearance of a new occupier in the old Seedish shop in Hill Road caused a stir earlier in the month when many people thought Clevedon was going to have a new newspaper. Then a new hotel appeared to open in the old bank building over the road. But all was not what it seemed. There was a TV film crew in town. For a week the film crew took up residence in the Salt House car park and filming began in a couple of local houses nearby. The new drama starring David Tennant is called Broadchurch and will appear on ITV early next year. Hill Road has become the main street of this fictitious Dorset town with much activity obviously taking place within the office of the Broadchurch Echo. Outside on the pavement, makeup artists were busily titivating members of the cast, characters who will obviously become familiar faces as the programme progresses. We have to apologise for the non-appearance of David Tennant in our report, but as filming is scheduled to continue through until November, we hope to catch a glimpse of him somewhere sometime. <laughs> 30 knitters, balls of wool aplenty and instead of the forecasted heavy rain a lovely sunny bank holiday Sunday. This was the ideal scenario for Clevedon's first knitathon on the pier. The event was the brainchild of Sarah and David Harris, who run the spinning wheel shop in Hill Road.
The youngest knitter was eight, the oldest was 83. Knitters came not only from Clevedon, but from Birmingham, Eastbourne, and a carload of really jolly knitting enthusiasts came from Oxford. The Knitathon raised something in the region of £90 for the Pier Visitors Centre, and it is hoped to display the finished mega scarf on the pier next weekend. This is Easy Strollers Line Dance Club dancing to raise money for Cleveland Community Centre. Details of what the centre does is over there on the side and we have three or four collecting buckets going around. Thank you. The Easy Strollers Line Dancing Group was formed by Val Vella in September 2000. They have a membership of about 70 dancers divided into beginner, improver and intermediate classes. Sessions are held at the Triangle Club on Monday evening and then at the First Cleveden Scout Hall on Wednesday and Thursday mornings and also on Wednesday evenings. Where the bloody roses grow Her cheeks were like red roses 
eyes and her hair and raven hue. Before that she had done with me, she had me raven too. She left me sorely stranded, not a kind she left you know. But the damsel that belonged to where the bloody roses grow. Well, anybody tell me where the bloody Apart from learning to line dance, they are a very sociable club and often go away for dancing weekends in Torquay, Bournemouth and more recently they have ventured over to Spain. This was the second attempt to hold the event, the sea being too rough to attempt it last month. 42 swimmers congregated on Lady Bay Beach to swim the mile or so course to Clevedon's main beach. At the appointed time, the paddlers from the Clevedon Canoe Club appeared on the horizon to escort the swimmers. The sailing club provided the rescue boat. On this occasion, men went first, and the start was under the control of Brian Bewley, who is an amateur swimming association open water referee. Right, ladies, here you go, get yourself warmed up. Meanwhile, on the main beach, all was ready, including the laying out on the pebbles of the white, not red, carpet. First across the line was the winner of the men's open class, Tom Jones, in a time of 19 minutes and 34 seconds. The ladies' open class winner, Lizzie Warnes came over the line in second place with a time of 21 minutes and 43 seconds. The third swimmer across the line was Zach Holdaway, the winner of the men wearing wetsuits class. Thank you. 
Clevedon Light Opera Club's junior section has been attracting energetic youngsters into their shows since 2005. Recently they have been rehearsing for their latest show, Footloose, which will hit the stage of the Prince's Hall next month. Choreographer Jules Ashton and director Linda Prescott were certainly putting the cast of 38 performers through some demanding moves during the evening. 